Yes guys, what's going on? Hashtag Shory here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. As you guys will see by the title and the thumbnail, we've got a bit of a different video here today. Going to be showing you guys a game I played in a recent tournament in Germany, being the Draft Story Cup. Uh, as, as you'll see by the title, it's going to be against one of the best pros in the whole FIFA scene, Huge Gorilla. Um, obviously ex-world champion, uh, absolutely amazing player, very tough game. Um, and yeah, this is going to be a best of three guys and I'm just going to take you through the gameplay and just sort of show you little things that I was thinking, little tips that I could maybe give you guys. So this tournament, as I said, it was a draft story cup. So the format was that we built drafts uh, throughout the rounds. So we had the group stages where we stuck with the draft and then we each knockout round that you would make it to, you'd get to build another draft. And the rule was um, you could build one draft and if you liked it, you could stick with it. If you didn't like it, you could do a second one, but then you'd have to stick with that second one, so you can't go back to the first draft. So it made it quite interesting, quite fun. And another thing you guys will notice about this gameplay is that I have Vieira in my team, who I don't actually get in the draft. Um, we were able to have three champion picks, which basically meant uh, throughout the group stages and then throughout knockout rounds, you could choose to use these champion picks. So in the group stages, I used Hullet, and then in this, I used Vieira, and I had R9 I could also use if I made it to a later knockout round. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything explained about the tournament, guys. And uh, yeah, we may as well get into the gameplay now and I'll show you guys the games against Huge Gorilla. So guys, into the gameplay we go here and just quickly we get to see me and Wes Tanza. What a boy. Um, yeah, he kept, Wes came along and coached me, so that was great. And uh, yeah, we had a decent tournament, so we'll absolutely take it. We're going into the game here, guys, and the first clip is just not too great, really, from me. Um, ball over the top should be dealt with a lot easier, and somehow I've managed to head it down to his Perlo, and to be fair to him, used a great bit of composure there. Um, just, it's little bits of composure like that that make the differences between sort of pros and casual players. Uh, a lot of people might have just shot there, might have tried to go solo with Perlo, but you know, that little bit of play from him, and it's got him a goal. Tried to do a bit of skills in the box here, and, you know, on this game, a lot of the format is just, people are just going to sit back. Drop back is very much used. But one thing that was very interesting about this tournament is that drop back was banned at the tournament, and we had a minimum of, like, four depth as well. And I'll just say here, I let the ball roll through my legs with Ronaldo there, and I really thought that was going to go in. It was a really nice bit of play, and people just don't expect that. As you can see with his Van Dijk there, there's no way of him expecting that. The cast has actually touched on that as well. But yeah, at the tournament, yeah, you couldn't use drop back, so it made it a bit more people weren't sat back, which has very much been the meta of this game so far, as, as I'm sure you guys will know playing foot champs. But here with Vieira, I'm just on the edge of the box. Vieira's not the most agile, not got the best dribbling, so you don't really want to move forward with him. You just want to release the ball. I'm just doing some drag backs here, trying to do some skill moves. You need that one skill move that unlocks the opponent. And, uh, you know, I just thought I'd keep this clip in here to show you guys the kind of thing that we're working with in pro tournaments at the moment. I don't even score from that. And all of a sudden, it's half time. And he definitely deserved the first half. He was absolutely all over me. And I probably had one chance that was good enough to score, but he had quite a few. So, uh, may played a through ball here. I could have potentially offside trapped here, but instead, I read it and I just pulled my keeper out straight away. And, yeah, I give the ball away cheaply again here. And he's just absolutely all on top of me at this point. Um, it was surprising that he didn't go and score a second here because, yeah, that one with Dalglish normally would go near post. If he had a bit more composure then, I think he could have just stopped it with Dalglish and then just finessed it in, in another corner. But, um, yeah, we're getting to the end of the game here now, guys, and I give the ball away again cheaply when I'm on the last attack. And you never want to do that, guys. Whenever you've got the last attack, you want to make the most of it and you want to slow it down and just try and make sure you get the last attack. But... He gives the ball away again, and I couldn't believe my luck. I thought I had one more chance to do it. I let the ball roll through my legs with Pele again here. Again, it's effective. Finesse it near post, and he saves it. So, guys, I go short from this corner. As you can see, the time, it's plus two already. So, I had to basically kick it straight into the box. So, it was probably better off that I didn't go short there. I probably should have whipped it in, even though that's not really the meta on this FIFA to do headers. I probably should have done that kind of thing. But, yeah, that was the end of the first game, guys. So, he won 1-0 in that first leg first of the best of three which basically means he only has to win one game out of two now and then he would be through uh, into the quarterfinals for top eight so um yeah but as we can see here guys i won the ball back well there and uh, i basically i triggered the run uh, with cr7 with lb and i just waited with mane and he just wasn't expecting it because i'm that far back in midfield he just wasn't expecting a run there most pros would switch with the right stick to van dyke there and just stop stop me getting it because I'm, i was so far back i did a y through ball he just wasn't expecting it and I would definitely say that's a good tip for you guys. If you have the ball in midfield and you're, you know, you're kind of on a counter-attack, 
People aren't expecting you to do that long ball. So yeah, I got an early 1-0 lead in this game and I was feeling a lot more confident. As you can see, I'm winning the ball back more. And I was just playing smarter FIFA. I wasn't giving the ball away stupidly the, the, the same way I was in the previous game. And I got a bit of composure. And here, down the wing with Neymar, you know, I start whipping out some skill moves. I'm thinking to myself, I'm feeling confident. And it was a good interception from Van Dijk. And to be honest, Van Dijk in, in, in this whole tournament just absolutely dominated. Like, if you got Van Dijk in your draft, you felt so fortunate because he literally takes over and he was so hard to play against against Gorilla especially who actually defended really well throughout the whole tournament and I think this is his goal here and as you'll see like I spoke about before it's just slow build up a nice little skill move from Perlo here and to be honest I'm quite disappointed in Longley there not winning the ball I thought I kind of read him doing that but I don't think I switched to Longley quick enough there and he, and he bangs it in at the near post with Cruyff there and to be honest when it's Cruyff on his, his left or his right foot yeah, he's just absolutely unstoppable. And, you know, someone with five-star weak foot, he had Dalgleish and Cruyff with five-star weak foot in this. And it was very difficult to play against because they can turn on either foot straight away, finesse it in. And I think there's a goal later on coming up that's got that kind of thing, which I'll speak about then. But, yeah, obviously, when it was 1-1 at this moment, I'm starting to fear because I'm thinking, you know, it, like, he, he, it's back on level terms. If he scores, you know, my tournament's over. So I had to clutch up here. So I'm just doing some slow build-up here on the wing. I managed to see him pull out his fullback, so I do a little ball roll around him. And now with Marley, it's about this composure in the box, guys. And to be honest, I was really disappointed this didn't go in. That was an absolutely amazing save from his keeper. But when you get down the line, guys, you want composure. You don't want to just randomly driven pass it into the box and hope for the best. You want to actually look out for a pass. You want to slow down for a second. Because it's very rare someone's going to charge in at you in the box. Um, but yeah, Gorilla here... He was dribbling really well on the wings. It was really difficult to defend against. And once he starts making it so my um, CDMs come out of position, it means he can just attack at my centre-backs, and that makes it really difficult. Ball on the edge of box with Wijnaldum here. Again, I'm just trying to slowly break him down. Ronaldo with a few skill moves here. And I should really do better here. I shouldn't shoot near post with Mane, but sometimes the finesse from that angle, and again with Neymar there, his keeper makes an amazing save, and sometimes that just happens in this game. Yeah, on the edge of the box here, and it's the 92nd minute gear, guys. So I'm literally trying to hold out for the absolute last attack, and I make a bad pass with Ronaldo, and we are going to extra time here, guys. Play a ball out wide to Salah here. I see this run from Pele, just kind of similar to my goal that I scored in this game. And yeah, I choked a bit here, but I managed to get around the keeper and get a penalty. And yeah, guys, it's the 100th minute now, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, if I can get 2-1 up in extra time here... I can probably close this game out because there'd been so little goals in the whole series already. I thought to myself, yeah. And it's, to be honest, it's quite a poor penalty for me. I was feeling the pressure, as you'll see in the face cam, quite a bit. And unfortunately, missed that penalty. So we are going to the second half of extra time here. And as you see in this game, I did dominate a bit more. I had six shots, five on target. And I'd say they were all from pretty close to goal. And I have the last attack here, guys. I'm thinking to myself, wow, if I just score here, I avoid the penalty shootout. I'm trying to just create a chance here. I get the ball into Ronaldo. And yeah, probably could have done a drag back there or something. But so yeah, guys, as you can see, we are going to penalties here. And, and obviously, because I just missed a penalty in the normal time, I was absolutely fearing the worst. And with this one, I think I went a bit early. What you want to do with penalties is press you and then move it afterwards because then your head movement doesn't give it away as much. And yeah, I gave it away a lot there and he makes the save. But yeah, at this point, guys, it literally is just a game of rock, paper, scissors, as said once by Wes Tanza. And yeah, luckily I managed to win these penalties, but you know, it was absolutely, you know, just a complete luck. So, but I think I did deserve it from this game. I think I had quite a few chances. In the first game, Gorilla absolutely destroyed me. And I'd say he deserved, you know, if we were playing a best of two, he probably could have been two, three goals up. But on this, in this game, I think I definitely deserved it. As you can see here, I make a good save here. And it's, it's neck and neck here at this point. We've only scored one penalty each out of three. I put it left. And as you can see, I did that a bit better with Ronaldo there. I did it late. So he didn't see the head movement as well. And to be honest, I was just guessing at this point, guys. I had no idea where he was going because he was good with the head movement as well. He didn't give it away too much. And yeah, you can see me chatting with Wes here and I'm just thinking to myself, where do I go? And I went quite early again there, but I got it in the corner, fortunately. And we win the penalty shootout, guys. So we are going into a third game now. And I start this third game pretty well, to be honest with you. I think I was, you know, I was under the cosh a little bit because he'd brought quite a lot of pressure on me. But at the same time, when I did get the ball in attacking areas, I was attacking well. I, I can see when I'm playing well, when I'm doing slow build up. And here I do a nice little scoop turn with Ronaldo. He overcommits with Van Dijk and we get a penalty. We get a penalty again, guys. And I'm thinking to myself, please, Alex, come on. Don't miss this one as well. 
I go late, I green the penalty as well, and he saves it. And I'm thinking, no. Here with Mane, I don't really know what's happened there, to be honest. Mane should definitely receive the ball. I think that was a bit of a glitch at that point, but yeah. Big mistake from me here, although he kind of, I, I should have won the ball back. There you go, Dalglish. This game is so unforgiving. If you literally give away one little chance, all he has to do is open up that finesse with Dalglish and it's a goal. And because of that five-star weak foot, guys, I would really advise you guys getting five-star weak foot players. You can shoot on both feet and it's so unpredictable for a defender, you know. Messi on this game is amazing and I, I use him in my team, but if you are defending against Messi, you know a lot of the time someone's going to shoot on the left foot. Whereas five-star weak foot players like Dalglish, like Cruyff, like R9, I know these are expensive players, but, you know, Xiong Min Son's another one that you guys could probably afford. He's just absolutely amazing and so hard to predict on this game. So it's half-time here and, you know, I've come out the second half and I'm thinking the worst, you know, I'm 1-0 down. I'm fearing going out of the tournament. We create a chance here. Probably should have taken more time with Pele there, but it was weird how he took the shot with his left foot. But what you wanted to do, guys, as you'll see from that last clip, is play it into your striker and get a skill move off. Try and link it up with the cam. Try and link it up with your other striker if you're using a two-striker formation kind of thing. So he's playing it down the line here, guys, and he gets a bit lucky here as I read it with, with Mendy, and then it still bounces over. But as you can see here with Longley, I do a good bit of LT and RT defending, or on PS it is L2 and R2, which it was on this occasion. I'm just used to saying it. It's Xbox, it's LT and RT. You want to be using that when you're defending all the time, guys, to jockey people and to, to potentially read passes. You want to hold both at the same time and move your analog sticks around. It's a great way of defending. Uh, it's definitely the way I would advise defending. But here we are in the 80th minute. I'm still 1-0 down. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, right, you know, I, I've been trying to come at him all game and it's not worked. I need to just slow it down completely. So I, I'm slowing down the edge of the box here and I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for that opportunity. And when I see, look, he's pulling out his midfielders now. I'm trying to get Vieira to come out and get his midfielders out. Perla's out of position here. As you can see with Wijnaldum, do a bit of dribbling. Get it into Ronaldo. A nice little drag back and into Pele. And we finesse it top bins and we get the goal back, boys. And that bit of play on the edge of the box there is so key. Once you get past the CDMs in this game, it makes people start defending with their centre-backs. They, they start fearing it, to be honest. Anyone does on this game because they're so hard to defend with. You want your CDMs there in front. As you can see, 90th minute here, and I honestly thought I was going to win it, to be honest here. I knew he couldn't get another attack, so I was just trying to keep the ball as high up as possible because if you don't keep it as high up at two minutes past... It will just end the game. Try to pass it into Ronaldo here. I don't really know if there's much more I could have done at this point. It was just good defending from Gorilla, in fairness to him. And into extra time we go here, guys, in the final game. And this was a good chance here. This was a really good chance. And Gorilla just defended amazing. I tried to create some space here. You don't want to just randomly spam it into the box. So I'm trying to do some drag backs to get around him and make it. Just have a shot or pass it, but he's blocking it off really well. I do another drag back here, and Van Dijk is there again. So... Yeah, and this was the worst moment of my whole tournament, as you guys will see here. I give away a cheap corner after I'd won the ball back, and I'll just let you guys watch this for yourself and see what happens. I couldn't really believe it when this went in. You guys will know, I'm sure, from playing the game, heading is not the meta in this game at all. Whipping the ball in from a corner is not the meta. You guys, I would personally advise you guys go short. Look at this. Header bounces in over my keeper, and to be honest, at this point, I was saying to Wes next to me, I was just... Like, I blame myself, even though the header was very weird. And you guys will see on the replay here, I have no idea how it went in. It was my fault. I gave away the corner. It was my mistake. And I was saying this to Wes at the time. But look, watch the way my keeper just watched it go over his head. He's just there like, okay, brilliant. So at this point, I was, I was just looking at the camera. I was thinking, what on earth has just happened? We kick off the second half here. And I'm just thinking to myself, right, I need to get a goal back. Like, and I need to do it right now. And I think if I didn't get it from this kickoff now, I don't think I would have scored the rest of the half just because Gorilla would have started keeping the ball so much. And I would have, my whole team would have had to come out at him. And eventually, he would have just probably got the third goal. But we play a nice pass into Ronaldo here. Another drag back to open up the space. And that composure from Wayne Adam to turn in the box. I would really advise you guys just giving that a go. I know it's something that's it's difficult. But when you get the ball in the box, sometimes it's not best to always shoot straight away. In my opinion there with Wijnaldum, if I'd have shot straight away, his defender might have got in the way. As you could see, he was coming to the ball. So yeah, I was absolutely buzzing to score that goal. And as you can see, 118th minute here, guys. What I'm thinking to myself is, right, I just want to hold out for the last attack. I'm not giving him the ball back to let him have another attack because that would just be... There's no point in me doing that. It would, it, that I may as well give myself the opportunity of penalties or scoring a last-minute winner. We get the ball in the box here. Salah with some good drag backs. 
I try and do a skill move with Pele to be a bit flashy, and unfortunately, he wins the ball back. And yeah, we are going to another penalty shootout, guys. He does not have enough time now, even though I lost the ball. He wouldn't have had enough time to attack. And yeah, we are going to yet another penalty shootout. Thankfully, with these penalties, I actually did a lot better with saving them. I saved his first one, which gave me a lot of confidence. And I believe I did score my first one with Neymar here. And as you'll see, I powered it up and then I moved it afterwards, which is something you want to be doing because he can't make out with the head movement as much. Yellowed the penalty and I was honestly so scared every time I would yellow it. But thankfully, it went in. And with his next penalty here, to be fair to him, it's a very good penalty. He puts it right in the corner. And even though I dived the right way, once you put it too far in the corner, sometimes your keeper just won't get to it. Um, but Salah here, I put it right in the corner and that was very lucky because sometimes them penalties can go wide Especially the bigger that the, the, the circle around the outside goes the more chance of the ball going How big that circle is if that makes sense some sort of explanation I guess Cancelo puts it in and at this point I'm three penalties up to one after the same amount taken and I'm just thinking Alex don't choke this he scores this penalty down the middle And I'm just thinking please I just need to score one out of two and here we are with CR7. I moved it late and we put it in, boys, and we win. So we made it to top eight at the tournament. This was to get to the quarterfinals. And yeah, I was absolutely buzzing at this point because two penalty shootouts is obviously quite lucky to get there. But at the same time, I think over the course of the last two games in this, I think I did deserve it. But yeah, guys, that's the end of the gameplay. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this kind of breakdown video. Obviously, it was just kind of clip after clip. And I just kind of wanted to go through the kind of things I was thinking as the gameplay was going on. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys thought of this type of video. Obviously, I did win that game. So I made it through to the next round. And I have another game I could potentially upload if you guys wanted to see that kind of gameplay. Um... And yeah, if you want to see how that game actually went, head over to the Hashtag United Esports channel. We've just uploaded the vlog for this whole video, for the whole tournament. It was absolutely a great tournament put on by Take TV, so a massive thank you to them. Drop a like on the video if you guys did enjoy it. And yeah, boys, until the next one, don't forget to hashtag it.